Okay, it's Cool Dude Clem here. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And some of you know that I'm getting into tube circuits. Well, in the upcoming months or so, I'm hoping to build a tube amplifier with uh, hopefully a push-pull output. But for now, I'm just doing a short video. So, I've rigged up a little tube amplifier using this 6C6. Um, pay no attention to stuff on this board here, that's my tester coil project. I'm only using the transformer from that to power this thing, so all of the other stuff on this board has nothing to do with it, just transformer. And of course the rectifying circuit as well. But anyway, I've got that hooked up to this tube, and the output of this tube is connected to this transformer, which is being fed into this speaker, which you might remember from some of my other videos. And I must say, it does sound pretty good. As a matter of fact, let's, uh... Okay, who's taking the tape out of this thing? I had a Beatles tape in there that I was going to play through it and it was gone. Oh my, I don't know what I'm doing now. But I think you'll hear how good this sounds. So I've got this, I've got the output of this tape recorder connected to the grid of this tube. And let's just take a little listen. Wednesday morning papers didn't come Thursday night your stockings needed mending See how they run Maybe without... Can even play YouTube through this thing. Go on, Joe Collins' video is playing. You can download. We're talking about 96 kilohertz per second sampling rate. So that's this video. Depth as far as uh, the Playing quality through is concerned. This old 19 well, new old stock 1940s tube to decode these kinds of files. Most PC sound cards really only work up to about 48 kilohertz. And this is the current circuit courtesy of my flickery webcam. See it's a very basic circuit. We've got the rest um blah, blah, blah. Got a transformer connecting the speaker, that's just an ordinary mains transformer. The input comes in through this capacitor and into the first grid. I've got the third grid connected to the cathode and the second grid connected to this 10k resistor here. And this 68 microfarad capacitor here. I don't think those values are critical but that's just what I pulled out of my parts box. Anyway, I'm going to make this a little better. I'm going to put the biasing resistors in at the cathode and the... Uh, control grid and we'll see if that makes it any better. Right, well I thought I'd try out these tubes as an amplifier and well they don't seem to work very good. Let me just plug it in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. They warm up nice and quick but can you hear that? And there's almost no bass. Let me just play something on the computer here which I've got connected up to this. get the general idea. Also, I was going to make a push-pull amplifier. Unfortunately, this is the transformer I was going to use for the output. I was going to use the 120 volt tap as the center and these two connecting to the two tubes, but that transformer, I measured the impedance across the primary and it's only about 30 ohms. So, you know, across there and there it's only going to be about 15 and it's only going to be about 15 across there and there, so that's not really usable. So I'm just going to go with a single ended output. Anyway, if I disconnect the filament, which is connected to this transformer here, which is providing about 2.5 volts at about 4 amps to power both of these tubes' filaments, only this one is actually in the circuit, this one has just got its filament connected, but um, I'm going to connect that one in a minute, because it's doing us something a little bit weird. But anyway, if I disconnect the filaments... The hum goes away! 
when I connect the filaments up again, we get the hum again. Anyway, I'm going to play the music again and disconnect the filament while the, fil while the music's playing. Right, here I go, disconnecting the filament. And that'll start fading out in a minute. So there we go. It won't take long to warm up these tubes, I know that. Okay. Got the other one connected up now. Let's just plug it in. Okay, sorry about that. My computer just decided to randomly stop. Decided to randomly disconnect itself from the camera. Anyway, got the other valve hooked up now. She can probably tell it's doing exactly the same thing. And it seems to be performing exactly the same. I'll just play a little music through it. Silly music is a silly like me. So that's all looking absolutely fine, but if we turn the lights down, something that's slightly worrying, don't know if you can make it out, but there's a bit of a blue glow on the glass there. That's not a reflection of anything, if I turn the lights all the way out, turn off every other source of lighting, so you can make it out now, a little bit of that sort of blue glow on the glass there. So that's kind of worrying, that, that means this tube could be producing x-rays, and if it is, don't really want to be in the same room with it. And if I disconnect the filament, it sometimes moves around, there it goes. I hope I'm not getting in the way. So yeah, I don't know if that's normal for those tubes to do that, but don't really want to run the risk. It's only this one that seems to do it though, the other one doesn't. So uh, maybe there's a little defect in this one, or maybe, maybe some of them just do that anyway, I really don't know. Okay, so this is the schematic of how that tube was wired up. Hope I've drawn it right. This is some very weird configuration here. I don't know what these two bits at the top here are. I don't know if this classes as a pentode or a tetrode with a weird thing there. I don't know what that is, but I've never seen one of those before. But you might have also noticed that there is no separate cathode. The cathode is the filament, which I was just powering from a AC transformer between two and three volts. That is what was causing all that hum, and I. And it's just going to be too much work to build an absolutely perfect, smooth DC supply for the filament. So what I'm going to do, scrap my original design and do it a bit differently. So here is my plan. I'm going to use this VT137. Is it VT137? Yeah, VT137 as my preamp. And I'm going to use this one as my output. And it's going to be a single-ended amplifier. Anyway, that's going to be in a new video because, well, this one's probably getting too long already, so in the next video, I'll see you, hopefully with something. And, yeah, until next time, goodbye.